I have been suffering from immense technical difficulty in these last few days, so bear with me if this review ends up coming a little bit late. This episode was just... I mean, it was an episode. Honestly, I have so little to say about it. Like, sure, it wasn't bad, but it didn't leave much of an impression somehow. Yeah, so from the start, there's a big fuck-off explosion from Oscar, which later we learned was the kinetic energy that Ozpin stored in his cane over lifetimes, which... This makes me wonder, why did Miles and Carey say that Ozpin's cane stalls time? Like, I thought we'd get some cool time manipulation shenanigans, but it was just kinetic energy. Maybe it was just a lie, or a really, really stupid way to say what he's storing? He's storing time, as in kinetic energy from over time. It's just stupid. It's just stupid. Maybe we'll get more in the future, who knows. We got the best scene of the episode, where Watts cusses out Cinder, and Cinder cries like the little bitch she is. I don't care if she's got a tragic fucking backstory. She's committed horrible atrocities, and just because she's got a tragic backstory, doesn't mean she is completely exempt from being called out for it. She's a bad person, who's done bad things. I don't care if she's got a, a, a dark backstory. Honestly, it would have been more justified if instead of Rhodes existing, it was Salem who came up to her and, you know, taught her and shit because Salem's just kind of an evil bitch like that. That would have made more sense, you know, have Salem be like the fairy godmother, but evil, and there's no Prince Charming for Cinder. Just, you could have done that, and honestly, I would have been more fine with Cinder being so evil. Anyway, that was the highlight. What's putting Cinder in a fucking place? Though I do have to wonder why dropping Watts is seen as a threat. I mean, Ruby characters can survive massive explosions. He'd be fine. His, no his aura is not that low. He just got out of prison where there was nothing damaging his aura. By now, it should be fine. Uh, um, I should note that between what I just wrote and now, I, I think an hour passed because I had so little to say that I ended up dozing off. That's a thing. Uh, I don't have much to say about all the stuff with Yang John and Ren. I mean, all the times for Yang to do a Yang, this one is completely fine. I Except her not trusting or liking Emerald. Emerald did help them, but at least Ruby isn't doing the trope of, Oh, they helped me once, so I immediately forgive everything they've ever done. And, you know, everyone's reactions make sense. Ren is pragmatic. He doesn't trust her, but recognizes that her help would be useful. Yang is skeptical and has a personal bias against Emerald and doesn't trust her because she's a bitch. And John is someone who values trust so much that he doesn't want to work with Emerald because that trust doesn't exist. And Oscar has just fir witnessed firsthand Hale's entire character arc as he completely switched sides, so naturally he's more lenient to Emerald. Especially because Oscar didn't firsthand witness most of her worst acts. Ironwood condemns Mantle to death and like, Okay, Ironwood's a cunt now, he's a monster. You happy, Rooster Teeth? I don't like Ironwood anymore. Thank you. And there's that little photo that Neo sent, and it looks really funny, and I like the implication that Cinder was like, hey, wait, let me take a snazzy pic for my contacts real quick. Like, does she have an image of everyone? Is there, like, an image of Tyrion doing a peace sign on her phone for his contact? Is there, like, an image of Watts sipping tea with his pinky? Is there an image of Hazel just giving her a, a nice thumbs up? Is there a picture of Salem dabbing on her phone? I don't know. And that's your lot, really. I mean, I just have so little to say. It's fine, but there's no substance to me. The last episode, maybe it was just too good for, in comparison to this one. Maybe it was just too good. I don't know. That's such a weird thing to say about Ruby nowadays. Maybe that episode was too good. My favorite parts of this episode, what's calling out Cinder, Ren's immediate wondering of where Nora is, because his concern was honestly kind of sweet, though I really want to see how he reacts to Nora in, in, in the bed. I, I just, ooh... I realized how that sounded. I, <laughs> I want to see how he reacts to the state Nora's in. <laughs> and I like that Ironwood didn't shoot Winter for letting Yang Zhan and Ren go. I'm glad he didn't just blow her fucking brains out, because I really thought he would, given how they've written Ironwood. My least favorite part of this episode was them not having the balls to make Yang and Blake kiss. You fucking cowards! Rooster Teeth, this was your perfect opportunity. I don't even like this ship, but this was the perfect opportunity. She just thought Yang would fucking die in a massive explosion. She was so worried, you could have had it right there. <laughs> Yang grabbed Blake's face. I thought they were going to do it. Rooster Teeth got no balls. And that's, that's the review. I mean, don't complain about the review being short, because you got an hour-long prediction I put out today. Just, come on.